Boy, I love butter. I love butter too. I mean, butter is delicious. The bottom line is butter makes everything better. I completely agree. But there's a problem when it comes to cooking with butter. What could be wrong with butter? Butter has a really low smoke point, which makes it really easy to burn. But today we're gonna solve that by teaching you how to make clarified butter and ghee. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews and we do recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So like we said earlier, butter is awesome. It is it's awesome. delicious. It makes everything better. But it, when it comes to cooking with butter, okay, you have to be careful because it has a low smoke point and you can easily burn that. And you may have experienced that. You've probably seen it in some of our videos where maybe you're trying to use butter to sear a steak and you put it in that hot pan and all of a sudden smoke, Oof, and then brown. the whole kitchen's filled with smoke. And if you go too far, it tastes really disgusting. <laughs> so we're gonna solve that today with showing you how you can make your own clarified butter and ghee. How are you going to solve that? Like, how does this work? So here's the thing, a lot of people don't know this. Butter is actually only about 80% fat. Really? Yes. The rest of it is about 16 to 18% water and then about 2% of milk solids. I honestly did not know that. Right. Well, and that's why you can have somebody who has a daily a dairy allergy, right? Where they can't have milk, but a lot of times they can have butter because it's only got a little bit of milk solids. And then sometimes uh... if they can't have butter, they can have clarified butter and ghee because all of the milk solids are going to be removed. And that's the difference between butter and clarified butter is the milk solids and the water are now removed. And that takes the smoke point from 350 degrees all the way up to 450 degrees. Now, what is the difference between clarified butter and ghee? Uh, good question. So clarified butter and ghee are very similar, okay. but they have a slightly different flavor profile. So. Clarified butter has the water and the milk solids removed, so does ghee, but when you, you start with clarified butter and then you're basically gonna let the milk solids drop to the bottom of your pan, which we're gonna show you, and you're gonna let them slightly toast, uh -huh. and that brings a nutty flavor to the ghee. Aww. I prefer ghee, especially when you're making it home, because it's slightly easier to make and it's a slightly more forgiving than making the clarified butter. I like anything that is more forgiving, but I am wondering why I need to make this at all. Can't I just buy this in the store? Yeah, because it's really expensive in the store, especially if you buy oh. good quality ghee. Okay. So if you go to like Whole Foods, you can buy like Organic Valley ghee and it's like $15 for a little tiny jar. Oh my gosh. So okay. you can go to the store and buy butter, you can even buy good quality butter, like a grass fed, like, you know, you can buy it. We're using the one from Kirkland. You can use the Aldi brand, it's, you know, any, any kind of really good quality grass fed butter. And you're gonna make it for a fraction of the cost of buying ghee that's made with that same grass fed butter. I like it. So it is very, very easy to make this. How easy is it? It is so easy that even Rachel can make it. How fancy. But. It does take time and patience. Oh gosh. Because if you try to rush the process like turning up the heat too high. That sounds like a Rachel move. You can easily go too far and not have a very good gear butter. Are we sure that Rachel can make you this? You can make this. I'm okay. Just, there's patience on the inside of me. It You've just, got that. It just needs to bring that up. Yep. That level. So very, very simple. You need one ingredient. Butter. Okay, so this is the Kerrygold version, like yes. the Costco version of Kerrygold. And I really, really like this one. Yeah. So one thing to note, because you are eliminating the water, and like I said, you only have about 80% butter fat in butter, you're gonna lose a lot of volume. So typically, 
a pound of butter is going to only give you about one and a half cups of ghee. Okay. The cool thing, but also I forgot to mention before about clarified butter and ghee. You know how I like to leave the butter on the counter? If yeah. you use salted butter, you, get a, you can keep it there for a week to two weeks, though it doesn't last that long in our house. Anyway, <laughs> clarified butter and ghee has a shelf life, like putting it in an airtight jar. Like a mason jar? I, I, yep, on the shelf, not in the refrigerator, six months. Nah. -uh. And if you put it in the refrigerator, you got about a year. Now, I do know when I've watched you cook with ghee that it's like a little dabble to you. Like yeah. it goes very far. Because it's got a great flavor. Yeah. And uh, the only thing you have to be careful of is you never want to introduce any water into your ghee because water will breed bacteria inside of that fat and now you've spoiled it all. Oh, so no, no, no. when you're using it, make sure you're using a dry spoon to scoop it out. Don't put any water in there because that okay. could ruin it. Okay, you ready? Yeah. So aside from having the butter, you do need to have a couple of like utensils. All right. So we try not to have videos that require a lot of utensils. You probably have a lot of these around your house, but I'm gonna show you what we're gonna use to make it a little bit easier. Not a snuffle up, I guess. No. You don't have to purchase a snuffle up. So we're gonna use a pan. Now, if you have a pan with like a white bottom or even like a stainless steel pan, that's really good because then you can see what's going on in the bottom as Watch opposed it. to like a black colored pan. Yeah. If you have a double boiler, it makes it even easier because uh, that you don't have to worry about scorching as much because you're using oh. the water below the top pan. So we'll just have to be more but careful. But we're going to do it this way. But yeah. again, you can do this with a double boiler and it makes it a little bit more forgiving. After that, you're going to want to have some cheesecloth. Oh, dang it. I thought that was a nut milk bag. No, it's cheesecloth. Fine. Not mandatory, but it makes sure that you get all of the milk solids out. Uh, you're going to find in the stores some lower quality clarified butter and ghee. Like they, they sell one in Aldi. And yeah. if you look in there and you'll see like chunks and stuff because they don't filter it out really well and you still end up with a little bit of milk solids. You want to right. get all the milk solids out of there. So I highly recommend cheesecloth. Super cheap. You can buy it in almost any grocery store. A lot of times you find it in the cleaning products aisle. I'll leave a link. I usually buy it on Amazon. It's cheaper. Uh, we're going to need a mason jar or something to store Aww. it. I'm going to recommend glass. Oh, I like how you have a date here. So, yeah, I like to put this, this, this ghee in it because it's going to look similar to even having, like, you know, bacon grease or something like that. Right. And then I put the date that I'm making it, and then below that, use or refrigerate it, and I put six months. So, nice. again, it never lasts It'll that long. It'll never last that long. Uh, after that, just to make it easier, not mandatory but I like having one of these little funnels for my mason jars. If you're gonna can or pour anything, I think it's worth a one-time investment for this guy. And then what you wanna do is you wanna have a good fine mesh sieve that you're gonna use to strain everything out. Uh, you can also use this one. I got a package on Amazon of like three different sizes and it was like 12 bucks. So I'll leave a link for that down below. And also, if you don't have this, it's okay, you can use a spoon. But like another one that's like a really fine mesh strainer, because this that'll help cute. you to scoop out the milk solid. If you don't have it, that's okay. You can use a spoon, but just know that you're probably gonna lose a little bit of that liquid gold as you're doing that. You ready? Okay, it's out of my system. Okay. I, I'm ready now. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna bring over our hot plate and we're gonna put our pan on here and we're gonna set the temperature to low again. Time and patience. Patience. You're looking at about 25 to 30 minutes total to do this. Don't worry, the video is not gonna be 25 to minutes, 25 no, to 30 minutes. No, you have long. to watch every single thing boil. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a pound of butter. Okay, so that's gonna give us about one and a half cups. I wanna just eat that. You, you know that, want right? to cut it into little chunks. You don't have to do this, but this is gonna allow it to melt faster without burning it. Okay. Set your hot plate or your stove to low and just put all of your butter in there. Nice. Ooh, I thought you more. were going to do it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to let this start to melt down. Again, time and patience. Okay. So one thing to note, as this is melting, it is okay to take like a rubber spatula just and it? just, you don't want to stir it. Just get all of the butter down to the bottom. Okay. Like but I see these guys. Once here. this starts to actually do its magic, you don't want to stir it. Okay. Okay. So right now you're just trying to get the butter to melt. And again, we're on low heat. Now, some people are going to be tempted, Rachel, to turn the heat up to high 
to get it to melt faster. Don't I'm do helping. That. Don't do that. I can't help it. If you do that, you risk the chance of burning the milk solids and creating brown butter, which we don't want brown butter. Fine. Now, if you're curious, what's the difference between brown butter and ghee? I'm always curious. Because that's when, when we when we accidentally burn the butter in our pan, you're yeah. creating brown butter. Okay. So the difference between brown butter and ghee is the brown butter still has the milk solids in there. Oh, okay. Okay, whereas the ghee has all the milk solids taken out. Okay, so once your butter is melted, what you wanna do is just turn up the heat just a little bit, and we wanna get everything to a simmer. And as it begins to simmer, what you're gonna see is little white foam pieces forming on the top. Okay. And what we're gonna do is we're going to Scoop use those off. our metal strainer or a metal spoon and scoop them off and put them into a bowl. Now, some people like to actually save this because basically what that is, that's your, that's your milk solids or it's whey. And no way. You could feed it to the chicken. Some people actually use it for like sauces and things like that. Huh. Put it in their pasta, which of course we're not going to use because no. we don't eat pasta. So we're simply going to let this begin to simmer and bubble. And one thing you'll notice, and when it gets to that stage, we'll show it to you, is it's going to start to sputter. The sputtering is a good thing because that's the water evaporating oh, out. It's we, a bad thing in your car. The, <laughs> the whole idea is we're trying to remove the milk solids and the water out of here. And that's one of the reasons that I actually will tell you that it's easier to make ghee because you need to get all the water out. But mm -hmm. if you get to the point where uh, it stops sputtering, which means the water is gone, if the milk solids begin to drop to the bottom and they start to brown, you're Ooh. at the ghee stage. Okay. So you've got to, to make clarified butter, you've got to stop at the stage where the water is gone. Okay. But you're not at the ghee stage yet. You know, a lot of times, you know, they can make this in big vats, like in factories, like restaurants and stuff. They'll make giant vats of it. And they have special tools to strain out the water. But at home, you need to be able to get the butter out without having the water out. How so do we not have all of the accoutrement? I thought we had everything. Not everything. Oop, it's sputtering. So yeah, so you see how it's it's starting to simmer a little bit. And as it does that, those little bubbles that are coming up, that's the water starting to evaporate. And again, we have a while to go still, but you see all those white things? We're not there yet where you want to scoop because you're okay. going to get a lot of them. All right. But as it does that, it's bringing the milk solids up to the top. How cute is that? And we're going to start scooping them off. But I wait until we get a bunch of them. It's easier to scoop because, see, that's that's how it's starting to go. You're starting to get more and more of them. And those milk solids will begin to drop to the bottom. That's why you have to make sure you have this on low Ooh. heat. Because if you don't have it on low heat, the milk solids are going to brown at the bottom. That's going to give you oh. ghee, not clarified butter. But we're going all the way to the point of ghee. We're going all the way. Okay, so we're starting to get a whole bunch of the milk solids up on top. So... You can scoop a little bit off because you also want to be able to see the bottom. So again, if you're using a regular spoon, what you're going to do is just kind of take it over to the side. Oh, nice. Like this and scoop it off. But see how what you're <gasps> doing is, is you're losing some of that. So that's where this like little strainer comes into place. And again, you're going to try not to stir it. Just pull it off to the side. And, but that'll allow the ghee to actually like go into the strainer. So you wanna actually use the strainer part, not the metal part. Oh, I see what you're saying. So even with that, you're losing a little bit. You can also use one like this, which is not quite as fine meshed as that one, but I like that one better. But see, it's the same kind of thing. You know, the whole idea is to get it like that. Without losing the butter. Yeah, there you go, just like that. I kinda of really like this one. Now, again, don't rush it, you know, like make sure there's a whole bunch of it up there because again, as you're doing it, you're stirring it a little bit and then you've got stuff dropping to the bottom and that risks that actually burning. So one thing I did want to say, because this does take some time and again, it's really easy. It, it's, yeah. You do have to baby it a little bit because you want to know exactly when it stops sputtering. So baby you, the butter. You can't just do this and then walk away into another room. Now, if you're using a double boiler, it's a little bit more forgiving because, again, you don't have a hot pan with the butter right on, you know, the, uh, on the heat source. And again, I know it's, it's hard to not constantly just be trying to get all of the milk solids out as they come up, but you really want to wait until there's a bunch of them. 
because again, if you look inside of this bowl, you can see that you are losing some of that liquid ghee. So precious. Also, while you're doing this, do not take your strainer or your spoon over to the sink and keep washing it off. Because you're adding water. Because you're going to be putting water back in. And the whole point is to get the water out. Okay, we're done. Oh, thank goodness. So at this point, you have clarified butter. Okay. So what we're going to do is... Just to clarify, you have clarified butter now. We're going to take the strainer. A lot of times when I'm using a strainer, I try to push everything off to one side. That would have been helpful and yesterday. No, we're just going to scoop it off. Okay. Okay. Now, you don't have to get it all off because you would... You're going to run it through another seat. Now, at this point, we have clarified butter. Okay. So what you could do is take your mason jar. You're going to pour it through a piece of cheesecloth and seep so that um, you have clarified butter. But okay. I want to go to ghee. I like the nutty flavor of ghee. We're taking it up another notch. So we're going to turn up the heat just a little bit. And you can see if you look down in the bottom, you see all the milk solids yes. that have fallen in the bottom. We're going to let this go a little bit longer, like another five minutes, and they're going to begin to toast. And that's going to give it that nutty flavor. Oh, how nice. You'll also find that it gets more golden. So if you look in here... If you look at the difference, see the color of that, and then look at the color of the little bit of clarified butter that's in the bottom of yeah. this jar. See how that's like more of a yellow and this is more of a golden color? That's what happens. And the longer you cook this, the more golden it's going to get. So we're just, you can already see how they're starting to get that brown down on the bottom. One thing I did want to mention, um, a lot of times you're going to see people say use unsalted butter to make this. I want salted ghee. Yeah. I like the salt content in my butter. butter. I almost never buy unsalted butter. I, some people love it and they yeah. want to control the salt content. Okay. I like using salted butter. I like using salted butter to make my clarified butter and my ghee. And also salt will help you. If you do get a little bit of water in there because the salt is going to help prevent any bacteria buildup. That's why you can put salted butter on the counter, but you can't put unsalted, unsalted. butter. Now, can I make this using unsalted yeah. butter? Yeah, a lot of times you're going to see a lot of people will make it with unsalted butter. So you can make it with unsalted butter. I just prefer the taste of salted butter. Same here. Okay, we are there. Look at the color. So what you wanna do now is you wanna immediately take this off of the heat. So we're just gonna simply push this off to the side. Oh, careful, baby. And then we're just gonna grab our trivet. And now you can look here on the bottom and see how everything got toasted. Oh, yeah. So you're done. So you've got ghee at this point. We did it. And what we're going to do is we're going to let this cool for just a minute because it's hot. You want to pour this into glass hot. And then we're going to pour it into our mason jar through a sieve. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our mason jar. Uh-huh. And take the lid off. We're going to take our little funnel, put it there. We're going to take another sieve. We're going to put it there. And then... You don't have to do this, but you're gonna make sure you don't get any of those milk proteins that are in the bottom. We're gonna line it like that. Very nice. And then we're gonna simply pour the ghee in here. Look at that golden color. And again, because you're using the, you can look at that. You can actually eat this. You know I will. You can just use a spatula, and if you get some of those, that's okay, because you've got the cheesecloth. Right, to protect you. Then what I like to do is use my spatula to just make sure I've got everything off. Really push it down. You could even take your cheesecloth and, squeeze if you don't it. mind it, and just like give it a little squeeze. Like a tea bag. Yeah, I mean, this is still a little warm, but... Not like it was. You don't want to waste any of that. Okay, there you go. All right. Go ahead and just take a little taste. It's still a little warm. Now we know why they call it liquid gold. Oh yeah, because it's such got it's got such a pretty color to it. But also, it takes an investment. It takes of time. Time, time to and patience. Do it. You ready? Oh, mm. such a nutty flavor. It does have a nutty flavor. That's mm -hmm. amazing. So now what we can do is we can just go ahead and put our top on here. And again, 
this is still a little warm. So if I were to seal this up completely, it's gonna create a vacuum. Right. So you'll have, which is good. It's great for preserving it. Uh, since I'm gonna pretty much use this right away, I'm gonna wait till it completely cools down before I seal the top way on there. But that's about it. And here's the thing about this. This is awesome for sauteing, pouring a little bit over your steak as you're searing it. If you wanna do a stir fry, you've got a really good healthy animal fat. And the thing is, is there's only really like three oils that have a higher smoke point than ghee. Really? And we're not gonna use most of them. Why? Because, well, one of them is rice bran oil. Okay, we're not gonna use rice bran oil. We're not gonna use, the other one is safflower oil. And then the third one is refined olive oil. Okay. So not extra virgin. Extra virgin's got a really low smoke point but refined olive oil, which I don't even really like the taste of it. So this is awesome for anything. It's actually got a higher smoke point than even using lard wow. or duck fat. So you could, if you have a big batch of it, it'd be a lot, but you can actually like deep fry in it. Can you imagine making like, a you know, like if you do like a chicken that's been wow. coated in pork rinds and then fry it in ghee. Oh my gracious. Let us know down in the comment section. Are you going to do that? Because I'm if, coming to your house for dinner. <laughs> Let us know down in the comment section how you like to use clarified butter and ghee. Did you realize it was this easy? Like I said, it is easy. It's just time and patience. Yeah. So let us know down in the comment section. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over here. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over there. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we're cooking with ghee, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.